All right, friends. Ooh, that one's loud. Um, so we just had some extremely juicy dialogue. I had some wonderful, wonderful lessons that I just learned in my group. I don't know about you, but so we had some lovely talking together, and that's probably brought up some either lessons or some situations or hopefully some questions, maybe even some real-life troubleshooting examples. Um, so this is the time for that. This is the, the group dialogue time, the time when we all talk together. So uh, I think the way we'll format this is raise an appendage, and uh, we'll point at you. And you, then you speak in a loud and clear voice uh, what you would like to say. And uh, there's a lot of us here, and we have 35, 40 minutes left for the talking. So self-manage your time accordingly, please. Yes. Because the way we're recording, yes. it's not going to pick up ambient questions from the audience. Ah. So if someone on the panel can repeat the question, Excellent. You it. We will paraphrase. Excellent. Could we do a check-in about recording this por uh, portion? Is everyone on board with that, or is there anyone who would prefer that it not be recorded? Um, is it okay if we do silence equals consent? Not always the strongest form, but let's, let's go with it. I <laughs> promise <laughs> 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 Why not? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so who would like to raise an appendage? Yeah, um, to paraphrase, uh, the question, called a question, is what do you do w when uh, a community member is crying out for help really loudly, perhaps through acting out, through inappropriate behavior? Um, does, that, does that feel good? Um, and one of the things that is really important there is to I'd say to recognize when a problem is too big for the group to handle um, and to be able to assess what resources to bring in. Um, for example, recently in a community that I'm a part of, we actually paid for a couple of folks to have therapy. Um, and it was super helpful to get them on like a more positive track. One thing I would say there that came up in uh, the group I was speaking with is that sometimes uh, some part of the overwhelmingness can be a feeling unskilled or like not, you know, I, I'm not an addiction therapist. I have no idea what to do. I don't even know how to recognize the patterns that are occurring here. So one thing that I always advocate for communities is to empower yourselves through knowledge so that you can get a sense of just, just how big of, is this? Is it feeling overwhelming because I'm triggered because I'm, I don't have the capacity to deal with this? Is it feeling overwhelming because, you know, I, I, there are areas here that I don't know. Is this really a cry for help? Am I questioning myself? Is this inappropriate behavior indicating something? Or do, am I just not feeling okay about it? So to empower yourself through knowledge by looking at like the Al-Anon website or you know the uh, blank Anon. There are lots of different resources out there that can give you rubrics and checklists and other things that can kind of give you a sense of just where you are and how much capacity you and your community has. And then those lists can often also provide vectors of action for you so you can kind of get, get a handle on it so that you don't feel so uh, burdened by the problem that you can just start breaking it down into little chunks and do that first step and then that first step will set you on a path that will hopefully lead you to resolution or to graceful exit Al-Anon large big thing can find on the Google yes Following what Jay said about identifying when a problem is too large for the group to solve or a particular individual, within my community, 
uh, a number of years ago, there were created two roles called ombuds. And since they've been created, those roles have always been filled by a licensed MFT or a psychologist from within the community on a volunteer basis. And the general terms are that all consultations with the ombuds are completely anonymous um, and will not be recorded, will not be shared with the governance body of the organization, and so on. So if there's a sticky situation, somebody can go to an ombuds and basically say, here's what's going on. And once in a while, the ombuds will say, I don't think there's anything you can do. I think that other person is in a state, you can call it pathological or not, but they're in a state where you're not going to fix it. So the question is how to be with it or how to distance oneself from it. Anyhow, uh, bottom line is uh, we have trained professionals to help with that assessment anonymously. Um, one thing that came up for me around this question, but also in my, the small group, uh, was the concept of um, eldership and what role elders play in our communities, uh, what's, what's lacking in our culture in a lot of ways, but also to the, to where are the places where we can find that, where people can come to, not go to, not just to get guidance about where to go, but... Um, Someone who you know you trust enough, so if they come to you because it's someone, you have them as someone, other people can go to them if there's something about you they don't know how to address. So just structures that support all that and creating um, places for that within our communities. So I have an answer uh, to that that probably won't be very useful in your situation. You've already left. So, oh, I'm sorry, yes. Uh, the question is what to do when a leader in a community could possibly use some feedback, but there could be a cost in giving that feedback because the leader still has power. Is that fair? Um, so this is a long-term answer. Um, it is possible to structure communities so that power is distributed and power is rotating and basically no one stays in a very powerful position for very long. That kind of structure brings other potential problems to bear, but it solves the problem under question here because there's no all-powerful leader. So I don't have any quick fix for the situation you described. I'm sure they exist. So I deal with communities uh, with, that are working with those long-term structures but are not working um, and are often dealing with uh, crises, at specifically sometimes around the concentration of power, uh, sometimes against the will and design of the structures involved, but, but often uh, cultural or personal or char char charisma-based, et cetera. And... Um, that one is particularly difficult. I want to call out also that it's not just leadership in community as well, but there's also that power has a really big influence on the ability to give and receive feedback and that power looks like a lot of different things, right? So your power can look like color. It can look like uh, economic status. It can look like uh, gender. It can look like age. You know, there's a lot of ability. You know, there's a long list of things along which our society assigns and a designates and also withdraws power from us that is ambient and in the environment, right? So there's all those things that we're working within, right? We are within this society. All of those are at play, whether or not we acknowledge their existence. They are power relationships that we are nested within. And then there's the interpersonal power dynamics that just kind of take place because we're all human animals and we're social animals and we're very 
highly motivated to seek relationships and those often involve power and the only solution besides graceful exit that i've come up with and there's a difference between graceful exit and you know bleep you bleep you bleep you i'm out <laughs> you know that that's very different that's not necessarily graceful exit um but graceful exit can be achieved with like living with your whole self keeping your principles intact and moving on from a space of healing and lesson taking and so that's your first option your your, your first common denominator other than that the only tools i've had success with in community is um, folks who are not in the power position officially but have power or credibility within the group unofficially in parallel ways or in formal ways those folks coming together usually a few you know, two to five and um, making a really proactive stance to model alternative behavior and also to fall back to the structures of the community. So when in doubt, go back to the bylaws or when under duress, go back to our common agreements, right? And having a group that holds credibility within the community in a parallel or informal way model that return to fundamental principles that can really provide an alternate it's a very legitimate, uh, the, the, the leadership is vested in the interest, right? You, you sit on top of the power structure, so it's, it's your base. And so it's a very legitimate place to go back to and reframe and, and draw that power back to the community level. That's one idea. Um, another thing I think of is uh, people who, whoever that leader is, who do they trust? Who do they listen to? Whose ideas do they seek out? So talking to those people, um, I've been in positions of power where pe some people were um, afraid to speak up to me, but did speak to other people in the community who then spoke to me, and things moved. Um, that was easy to hear. Whereas the same people, if they had spoken to me, it might have been hard to he might have been hard to hear. I probably would have me. I hope that I would have listened anyway. But they didn't speak to me first. They spoke to people who they felt safer with, and then those people spoke to me. Totally. Yeah. One and then two. Mm -hmm. helps if, if a sort of scapegoat uh, raises the issue. You know, someone who has little or no power in the community maybe doesn't have all that much investment in the community, but is just a shit disturber and is willing to take it on. <laughs> and raise the issue, and then others can sort of go, well, actually, they have a point there, you know, and sort of get a discussion. So, so, so someone with low stakes in the situation, but a high investment in uh, either shit stirring or perhaps the jester lifestyle, the trickster lifestyle, um, can can often be a, an accidental mirror, right? You can you can be like, oh, oh, well, actually, hold on. So that kind of a stranger from outside, for sure. And you, you had one. Uh, so the question is, how do you uh, have a conversation with someone when they're highly activated, when, they've, when they're feeling triggered, um, when you're trying to give them feedback in particular? Um, and I think the first thing to remember is, maybe that's not the best time. <laughs> <laughs> um, if they're feeling upset, you're probably not going to get very far. I don't know if any of you have ever spent time with a toddler, um, but they, their tantrums have these like cycles. And if you try to calm them down while they're like way up here, you're just going to send them higher and higher. But if you find that lull, that moment when they just kind of start sniffling, that, that's kind of your like opening. <laughs> and and so to use those good tools like that to just be really gentle to notice that this person's really upset and this isn't the best time. Um, and to like, offer them comfort and to make plans for the future for that better time. Um, and a great way to head off that kind of trigger moment is um, to be proactive about it, to set up, say, I want to have what may be a difficult conversation with you. Could we have a coffee date or go to a tea place or a bookstore? Whatever's like a good kind of like third space and let them know that it's going to happen so they can kind of prepare. It can be really helpful. Um, I saw a hand and I didn't want to talk over you too long. Okay. Um, I'm just thinking to turn to 
turn the table and say, what if you were the person who someone's coming to you and saying, listen, you're trigger happy, you're confrontational. Like, you know, what if for the leaders in the room, what if it's you who is being told that? Like, how to be the receiver of the feedback? Like, this, because we've talked a lot about, like, what do you do with the person in the community, that guy over there? But what if it's like, what if you were the person, you know? So just to kind of change the target of that and make it interpersonal, how to receive that feedback that um, you're trigger happy or that you're, you know, power, whatever, uh, power, you know, um, stick building or something. Or, you know, how to receive feedback from community in a way that's, um, how to open that for the other direction. So we have uh, another question on the table. Um, I'm going to try and paraphrase so that we can kind of fold these two together, which is um, how do you receive feedback about causing others to be triggered? For yourself as a person who is being triggered, like suppose I am the person who is throwing the tantrum, or I am the person who is building the power stick in a way that the community is not receiving that exactly. Okay. Yeah, so I think I'm hearing two uses of the word trigger, which I want to disentangle just a little bit. Um, so the term uh, to be triggered is often used, I'd, I'd say, kind of in social activism circles, social work more now to be like, um, to refer really specifically to when um, a traumatic memory is brought up. Um, and also that word is used in, a, I think, a more culturally general way, like use the phrase like trigger happy, like when somebody kind of is getting on this high horse, is being difficult, is having tantrums, is just a, a difficult person to work with at times. Does that, does that feel like it's kind of true to like both senses of that word for you? Yeah. Great. Um, I use the word activated um, in, uh, to refer to something that's sort of like a, a more positive spin on anxious. And I think that's a pretty common use for that word. I've run into it. Yeah. I'm going to hand Sassy the mic. So um, I actually have an answer to both of those questions at once, which is, um, so I'm going to share a tiny story. I've been that person who's been ha extremely triggered in the moment and very un unable to receive feedback. In fact, it kind of happens regularly with uh, me and my partner uh, because I, I'm married and I have a, I have a primary and uh, we're a bicultural marriage and so we have a lot of cultural miscommunications that happen and some of them end up directly hitting old triggers of mine from trauma that's passed. And so I become extremely unreasonable in very certain circumstances. Um, and the way that we, in our personal life, and we carry this out into our into the rest of our world, have dealt with that is every time we hit a triggered circumstance, we have a pre-agreed upon agreement that we made before we ever got triggered. Yeah, right, after the first time we got triggered. Um, <laughs> After the first time we got triggered, we were like, okay, this is data. This is data for us. This is data for me. I said, I want to know where my trigger zones are so that I can build appropriate boundaries around them and also know when I'm responsible for self-managing, when my 50% is the largest in the room and it's not actually their job. So I need to know that. That's data for me. That's a benefit to me. And you need to know that so you don't aim in the wrong places. And so that you know if you have a cultural expression of yourself that you're pretty sure is going to hurt a trigger, you can meta sandwich it beforehand. By the way, I'm probably about to trigger you, but my intent is to do this. Now I'm going to say it. How did you feel? That basic formula is a really great way to be like, oh, by the way, I think I'm approaching a trigger zone. So you can, when you make a structure that from the triggered moments you can harvest information and that you're both on that page of doing that, that creates both a culture of empowerment and also a culture of equalness because we're, we're in it together, right? It's not my problem. It's, we're scientists here. We're making this work. And then you gradually build a data store that means actually our fights are now about, you know, two minutes long because we've gotten a lot of the part out of the way and it's just straight to oh you're triggered okay now I'm dealing or oh, oh look